Duplex ultrasonography of the superficial venous system is carried out with the patient standing. In this episode, Michel Moore demonstrates the correct positioning of the patient, a standardized sequence to the conduct of the examination, the key anatomical landmarks in the ultrasound scan, and she once again emphasizes the key points in optimization of the image and flow settings. The normal direction of blood flow in the superficial veins is from the feet to the heart, that is, upwards in the standing position. This depends on the healthy functioning of one-way valves in the veins, which are delicate folds in the lining of the vein. If these valves do not function correctly, blood may actually flow downwards in the wrong direction, a condition called reflux. Reflux is the most common condition to affect the superficial veins, and in this episode, Michel concentrates on how to examine for superficial venous reflux. If you would like to have a transcript of this video with explanatory notes, please send me an email. The address is below, and it is repeated at the end of this episode. Please be sure to state which episode notes you wish to receive. Right, so firstly, let's get plenty of jelly on this leg. We always start at the level of the groin crease, and that's where we're going to pick up the deep veins and the junction with the long saphenous vein. To begin the scan, we're going to start using a linear transducer. This enables us to steer our colour flow box, um, and that's much more advantageous to the curvy linear, where the transducer used to have to be rocked by the uh, practitioner rather than the machine. So we're going to start in a transverse position and we're going to start at the level of the groin crease. This picks up our junction with the common femoral vein, deep vein, common femoral artery and the junction, the saphenofemoral junction and we get our Mickey Mouse sign just there. So most importantly to start off to assess the deep venous system to check for deep venous competency. So turning the probe into a longitudinal position that's 90 degrees from the transverse position back to the longitudinal position. This identifies the common femoral vein in longitudinal, this being the patient's head and feet and front and back. To begin, we need to press the pulse wave button and centre this in the middle of the vein. You can see that the angle is appropriate to the vessel walls and this is going to give us our best Doppel signal. At the moment, the trace is running a normal venous trace with breathing movements noted and we're going to increase the pressure through the vein and to do this we need to get a good squeeze on the patient's leg. It's inappropriate to squeeze around the front, it's just not going to provide us with the correct squeeze. We need to get in nice and close using your knee pressed up against the calf, making sure you're nice and centre in the vein and to squeeze the calf and then quick release. And what we can see now is the initial squeeze and the release and the blood flow cessates and goes back to normal because those valves are working well. Moving further down the vein, you can see now that our angle has changed and we need to appropriately change that angle to meet the vessel walls by manipulating the machine controls. And again, perform squeeze release. And again, we can see good forward flow and complete cessation of flow, demonstrating a nice, deep, competent system. We're turning back to our Mickey Mouse sign. We pick up the sphenofemoral junction, turning into a long section. And again, perform the same procedure. Pop pulse wave on. Again, the angle needs to be changed to meet the vessel walls. So what we can see now is the initial squeeze and then a large reflux coming back after the squeeze, demonstrating incompetence of that vein. 
to assess the run of the long saphenous or great saphenous vein back into the transverse position. We can see our long saphenous vein sat within the saphenous fascia, identified by the muscle fascia layer beneath and the saphenous fascia of the top. It looks like an Egyptian eye. Optimize our image, reduce the depth and follow down in transverse. We can see now the long saphenous vein becomes a little dilated at this point and we need to measure the AP diameter of the vein. to ensure that the maximum AP diameter is within normal limits to allow for any treatment, sort of radiofrequency ablation needs to be under 20 millimeters in diameter. So we can see now that this long saphenous vein actually leaves the saphenous fascia and becomes rather tortuous and we can see it wrapping round and around as we follow down. It's obviously incompetent but we can check that again a little lower down and again demonstrating large incompetence of that long saphenous vein. We can pull this down to the level of the knee We can see that the oils of the visual varicous veins are all associated with the initial incompetence at the saphenofemoral junction. So now we're going to move on to have a look at the short saphenous vein and also to check the popliteal vein for deep vein incompetence distally. Can I just get you just to turn around for me there? Just mind yourself, hold on to the bar there. That's it. Well, keep going around for me a little bit further. That's it, a little bit more. Fantastic. You're okay there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, starting in the posterior knee fossa, you'll bring up your popliteal vein and the short saphenous vein. Again, looking like a little Egyptian eye, you can pick that up just behind the knee crease. Turn into a longitudinal section. Then we're going to check the competence of the deep vein. Again, angle colour wave box. A nice squeeze on the calf. You can see lovely forward flow and again cessation of flow demonstrating the competence of the deep system. And a short saphenous vein. There is quite a lot of variation of the short saphenous vein as to the level of the junction with the popliteal vein. For this gentleman there isn't actually a saphenopopliteal popliteal junction. It's called the Giacomini's variant and we can follow the short saphenous vein right the way up the calf, up the thigh, where it eventually meets with a great saphenous vein. So the short saphenous vein looks nice and normal in calibre. And again, we can check the competency by obtaining the short saphenous vein in a nice longitudinal section. So we can see now that this vessel is a bit smaller, so our sample volume is too great. So we need to reduce the size of the sample volume box. And this is going to make the sample volume much more accurate. And again, we need to angle to the vessel walls. And again, a good squeeze. And there we can see nice cessation of flow, a little bit of movement, but that's just because I'm so close to the area of the probe where we're squeezing, nice cessation of flow and a nice competent short saphenous vein. Okay. So 
So now we need to assess for calf perforatus. And we can see there's a large, deep perforating vein coming from what seems to be the medial gastrocnemius vein and coming up through here into the fascia with the short saphenous vein but not actually affecting it or making it become incompetent. You can see this is the level where it perforates through and we can measure the width of the incompetent vein and we can also prove its incompetence again by doing a Doppler trace. Again angling to the vessel as it perforates through the muscular fascia. And a little bit higher into this varix. prominent, the incompetence is only a very low level. Squeezing above the level of the barracks can also help to demonstrate some backflow as we can just interpret there. So here we can demonstrate a significantly large calf perforator. We can see it's a perforator extending from the medial gastrocnemius vein here and it perforates through the muscle fascia just there. So what we're going to do is measure the diameter of the perforator as it perforates through the fascia layer and we can see that that's measuring six millimeters and that's a significant perforator. But now we need to check the incompetency of that perforator to see whether it is significantly incompetent. Again, placing the caliper, pulse wave caliper in the pencil center is going to give us our best measure of incompetence. We can see we've got a little bit of noise just going on here, so we're just going to reduce our overall pulse wave just to get rid of that background noise just by reducing the overall gain. And now we're going to do a little squeeze. So we can see on that trace that although the vessel is quite dilated, the actual incompetence is less than 0.5 of a second and that suggests that there's actually um, an insignificant perforator. Anything over 0.5 to 1 is low level incompetence and then greater than 1 you're going to be looking at significant incompetence. So the other way that we can demonstrate incompetence during um, a Doppler scan is by using the colour flow Doppler. And this is going to demonstrate both forward and reverse flow using the red and blue colour Doppler box. So to select colour flow, again, similar to using the pulse wave, we need to ensure that the colour wave box is angled appropriately to the level of the vessels. And we can see that we're getting some nice fill within that vessel there, but it could be optimised by reducing the PRF, or also known as flow or scale. And this helps to show, demonstrate the filling of the hull of the vessel by reducing the speed needed for the machine to detect the blood flow within the vessel. So we can see that under normal phasic respiration that we have the blue flow and that demonstrates that the blood is flowing away from the probe and that's going back up to the heart in the correct direction and this is our common femoral vein. Now to find the great saphenous vein, which we have demonstrated previously to be incompetent, we can place our colour box over the top and we can see that there's some low level echoes inside here anyway and this is just stagnant blood flow and the quality of the machine 
being able to detect those low level echoes within the vein itself. So again, following a good calf squeeze, we can see initial forward flow and then we see the red. So this is demonstrating blood flow towards us. So it's coming back down from the heart, which again demonstrates incompetence of the valves within the great saphenous vein.